Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the regularly scheduled Board of Finance meeting for the month of December. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7.32. Uh, there being no public participation tonight, uh, since there's no one in the audience, uh, I'd like to open it up for the discussion and approval of the minutes from our November 19th meeting. Give you gentlemen a few moments to kind of review the minutes. Just a couple things, Kevin. Yes. On the um, bottom of page one. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't vote in that uh, particular motion. Which uh, bullet four? Or? Yeah, it's the last one. Yeah, bullet four. So, so I wasn't involved in that one. Okay. And then, and then on page three, and bullet number seven, item two. Just a little, um, no longer be valid. Okay. Anyone else for any uh, changes to the minutes? Jim? I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Moffitt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the review and approval of the 2008 Board of Finance uh, budget meeting schedule that we have come up. Uh, this came up for discussion last month, but uh, there's been some changes and some revisions uh, based on our recommendations that Pam has come back with. So, Pam, I'll uh, let you take it away. Thank you. Uh, as you will note in the packet, you did have a copy of the revised 2008 meeting schedule. And I adjusted the schedule, as Kevin indicated, in accordance with our discussion last month. And basically, it only affected the meeting scheduled for March and April. Uh, we did change the March meeting to March 24th and the April meeting to April 21st. And I do apologize that I picked up the date of the April vacation incorrectly. Uh, I do believe that at this point, that is an accurate schedule. And if you approve it this evening, I will file it tomorrow with the town clerk's office as required. Okay. Now the, uh, the all day meeting, I should say the all day budget meeting is scheduled for February 8th, right? Right. That's separate. That is on your budget planning schedule. And I did update that as well okay. based on our discussions and also to reflect the changes in the 2008 meeting schedule. This doesn't need formal approval, approval by the board. It was more informational and this mm -hmm. does not get um, published because so many of the meetings are tentative at this point. Um, I believe, if you recall, last year we scheduled and rescheduled uh, as needed with budget meetings. But your February 8th budget workshop at this point is pretty close to a commitment. I have let department heads know to plan accordingly. Okay. Is there any, uh, does anyone else have any conflict with the uh, February 8th meeting, the Friday meeting? That's the all-day budget workshop where we kind of go through the uh, departmental budgets, probably about 12 of them in total. Okay. No issues with scheduling on that, Pam, from the departments either? No. Everybody's all no. set to go? A couple yeah. actually plan their vacations around it, so we're okay. okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And hopefully there will not be a snowstorm on that date. Yeah, like there typically has been sometimes <laughs> in the past. All right. So do you need any formal approval on the other uh, on meeting the schedule? On 2008 yeah. meeting schedule, We can yes. put that up for, uh, for approval. Right. I'll make a motion that we approve the 2008 meeting schedule as provided by PM. Okay. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Zarena. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the um, 
everyone has been given a copy this evening of the uh, a template that I've established going forward uh, for our five-year capital plan. Uh, as you know, the Ad Hoc Planning Committee is going to be meeting over the course of the next uh, month and a half or so to come up with a uh, kind of a five-year capital plan. They're going to basically be prioritizing uh, their projects beginning with the upcoming budget season 2009. So mainly most of the prioritization projects will come up this year and then we're going to actually have uh, the Ad Hoc Planning Committee uh, work with the Board of Finance and the first selectmen to come up with a kind of a long-range uh, five-year plan uh, so that these projects can be phased out. Um, this particular template in front of you only has a copy of the 2007 fiscal year ending and the 2008 fiscal year ending projects on here now. Um, so what this template will actually look like in another month and a half or so after the uh, budget cycle comes to fruition, what we'll do is we'll load in the projects from 2009 through 2012 based on the approval of uh, this board, uh, approval of the first selectmen, and also the approval of the Haddock Planning Committee. So we will kind of work as a team to kind of develop that and put that together. And this way here we have a documented formal template that captures all the costs, all the projects, and uh, we'll have our plan in place. Similar to what we're going to do with the, uh, the operating side, but that's only a three-year three -year look. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the uh, the format or, or the template? It has also has a start date and a completion date so that we can kind of schedule, uh, you know, the beginning and end of when these projects begin and, and when, they, when they end from a financial standpoint. So most of the projects that you see in here are basically one-year projects. They begin at the beginning of the budget cycle and they tend to end towards the end. So... But there's also a area at the bottom of the template for long-range capital projects in the event that down the road, a few years from now, that we decide to bond, we can put some of the bigger projects in there. So this is just basically for PAM's edification and, and usage and, and mine and, and, the, and the boards, just so that we have a tracking mechanism in place for, for the capital projects. Look good, PAM? Yeah? Okay, yes. All right. Um, next is the review and discussion of the 2007-2008 revenue and expenditures. Uh, Pam, Pam has a brief uh, summary of uh, some bullet points that she wants to hit. Yeah, if um, you would give me a moment to do just that. Actually, I did provide you in your monthly memo with some monthly news and a couple of things I would just like to mention. I first shared with you that as a result of our meeting with Moody's a few weeks ago, we did in fact receive our bond rating of a double A2. They reaffirmed that commitment to that strong rating, but they also granted us a positive outlook, which we were quite pleased about. Of course, we had hoped for an actual upgrade in the rating to a double A1. While we feel that we are in an excellent position based on the data that we received from other towns that have a double A1 rating, the Moody's um, credit rating report did in fact reflect that while they agree with us on numerous issues to support an upgrade, they feel that a lot of what has improved has done so within the last couple of years and they would really like to see that maintained. One very important factor was in fact the investment fund balance and debt policies that this board recently approved and I'm pleased to say the Board of Selectmen approved as well at their meeting last week. So what occurs during a positive outlook um, message is that within 18 to 24 months Moody's is obligated to reassess the town of Orange and our rating and at that point it's probable according to Moody's that we will be upgraded to a AA1. Um, they're very pleased with the undesignated fund balance. They of course think more is best. Um, I know there's a lot of debate just between towns as to what the percentage should be but the average for many AA1 rated communities is anywhere from 15 to 19 percent and we're right in the middle there. So I think we're definitely heading in the right direction. The only thing I neglected to provide in this memo was a copy of a letter from our financial advisors with regard to that. And I do apologize, so I do have it with me this evening. There you go. <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. 
And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. If not, I'm just going to briefly cover a couple of the other items. Um, as I mentioned, we did have approval of those policies at the Board of Selectmen meeting on December 12th. And next, our plan is to come back to the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen and present you with strengthened financial policies rating, relating to the pro procurement and expenditure um, processes and regulations that are currently in effect. They have not really been revised in probably more than 10 years, so um, we are hoping to update those and bring them to you for formal approval as well. As promised, um, I did advise you that I would keep you updated on our Phoenix upgrade for our financial software. And I'm pleased to say, though I probably drove everybody in the finance department crazy by <laughs> having a very uh, aggressive schedule the week after Thanksgiving, as well as the poor representative from Phoenix, but I was most anxious for at least the general accounting system portion of this upgrade to be completed, and it has been. There aren't any real significant changes in reporting information yet. They are promising us a, a module that will be included sometime at the beginning of the new year that should give us a little more flexibility with reports. Um, but it is much more efficient and it was really not even a question of whether or not we were going to do it because we needed to. As I explained, we were two versions behind and they would no longer support the system. So we now have a SQL system and it really is working quite well. Our next step is sometime in January and we will be switching over our payroll software program to an HR payroll component and it is extremely different from what we have so I expect that to be a much more complex process and probably we will be pulling our hair out a lot more than we did on this one but we're up to the task and we know that the end results will certainly be beneficial in our ultimate goal of improved record keeping of employees time and we are hoping that we are able to keep better records of accrued time and actually reflected on employees paychecks uh, every two weeks and that's our ultimate goal so stay tuned um, also I wanted to bring to the board's attention since this will ultimately <coughs> affect a transfer of fund request and the town of Prospect decided to withdraw from the district animal control at the end of 2007 as a result that leaves the other three towns Bethany Orange and Woodbridge to absorb the cost for district animal control between three towns instead of four for the remainder of the fiscal year. Um, there was a meeting scheduled last Thursday evening, but unfortunately because of the weather, it was canceled and it's sometime this week. So as soon as I have more information, I will certainly bring it to your attention. And as soon as I have everything together, I will request a transfer of funds so that we can properly appropriate the funding that's needed. I do believe at this point that we will be able to work within our current operating budget. Um, again, hopefully optimistic on that. And just two more items. The audit for fiscal year 2007 is almost complete. I did speak to Michelle Loso and she has advised that she did file an extension um, primarily to allow the Board of Finance an opportunity to review the audit and provide some input. She is hoping to have drafts to us by December 31st and I will certainly get that information to you. And lastly, we were supposed to again meet with um, representatives from Silverbrook last Thursday and the weather actually caused a lot of problems as you well know. We have been having some issues um, with Silverbrook Estates and it seems to me that there's a little bit of confusion about where the management company's responsibility for repair and maintenance ends and where the towns start. I did spend a considerable amount of time reviewing the agreement with the management company that the town has. I think um, between Jim and I spending some time discussing it that we're pretty clear on how this needs to be addressed and we're hoping by meeting with a representative from the management company as well as Sue Morrow who's the administrator of Silverbrook that we should be able to clear this up and uh, hopefully you know move forward a little bit more efficiently. The only thing I wanted to give the Board of Finance a heads up on is that I understand that Silverbrook was built around 1995 and I think this is probably the first time that we are starting to see 
maintenance on the buildings that the town owns. And as a result, my recommendation is going to be to have a line item in the 0809 budget for maintenance. It just seems to be something that the town needs to recognize. They do own the buildings. I really don't have a dollar figure at this point. Um, we have had a couple of <coughs> expenditures in the past couple of years that were totally unexpected on our part, and we did our best to um, absorb the costs through either the public works maintenance or it's one of the maintenance accounts that seemed reasonable. But if this is going to be a continuing trend, then we need to properly budget for it. So. That is, is it more like a renov renovation type maintenance or is it maintenance like uh, sanitary cleaning the floor? One example has been the need for um, a replacement generator. And okay. That has been the most recent. So issue. this could be something that actually could go into the capital side Some of the of operating it. This, this right. happens to have not been that um, high of a cost. It was mm -hmm. under like $3,000. Okay. If you remember, a couple of years ago, we had to put that air conditioning unit in mm -hmm. there because they were running Correct the hose over Right, yeah. right. Yeah, probably stuff like that. Yep. But ten-year-old building. It's, yep. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I did um, get a copy of the budget that was approved for Silverbrook, um, and of course, we have townspeople who are representatives on their commission. And there is a line item in there for almost twenty thousand dollars for maintenance and repair. So we just need to see how they're expending their budget and how we need to address ours. But again, we do plan, I think we just scheduled a meeting um, for January 3rd or 4th. Um, okay. So I will report back to you in January on this. And lastly, with the 0708 year to date, as far as our revenue report, as I've indicated previously, I do check our year to date in comparison to the previous fiscal year to date. And we are very much on target. Um, last year at this time, we were approximately 50% of collections, and we are currently at 49.08. So I feel very comfortable about those figures. I think um, with regard to revenue, as I've mentioned in the past, we really don't adjust for the OVNA or the police special duty until we receive the audit report. Right. Um, there has been requests in the past from Board of Finance for an idea of where we're at. And while I do run a trial balance every month just to kind of see where an estimate is, I would feel comfortable at this point, even though you know we're five months into the year, of saying that we certainly could justify taking five months of that projection, I feel very comfortable that we will reach that both from the police extra duty and the OVNA where we stand right now. So just for future thought, I don't know if it would be the board's pleasure at some point to actually adjust our revenue report to take a portion of that and reflect it in here or if you're comfortable with waiting until the audit report so you never actually see it. Fortunately, our revenue has exceeded our projections in mm -hmm. the last few years, so it really hasn't been problematic. But right. again, it is your pleasure, so if you want to give it some thought and let me know how you would like me to proceed on that. Yeah. Um, as far as the audit report, are we going to schedule that to be in January? It would be advantageous to do it at a special meeting versus the regular scheduled meeting? I, I believe that would be the best. Um, way to approach that, but at this point, with regard because that's to really the, a meeting all in itself, right? I mean, so, with regard to the 0708 figures, what I'm really asking is whether you would like a projection. We can actually put revenue figures mm -hmm. into the 0708 revenue report for yep. OVNA and police special duty that reflect a guesstimate or an estimate. It'd be a forecast, at this point. right? Right. Um, yep. So that that's just something else that for you fine. to yep. think about, and let me know how you'd like me to proceed on that. Okay. And lastly, with regard to expenditures, um, I first thing, my summary report, I do apologize, last week was a little bit crazy, and I realized they didn't change the target percentage at the top. So this may not have been as helpful as I had hoped, but it should be 42%. And if you go down to the very bottom of the report, it does reflect that our expenditures are at approximately 31%. Yep. So while it's kind of difficult to gauge this because so many things are paid in advance, 
I think is a result of the fact that we've encumbered a lot of money, a lot more than we did last year. Yeah, with the blanket orders, right? Exactly, yeah. and coupled with the fact that many things are paid in advance, um, memberships, things of that nature, I feel comfortable that we're in pretty good shape. And I know I threw a lot of information out at you in a short period of time, so I'll be happy to address any questions. Pam, I got a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, just going back to our, uh, our minutes and stuff, in the future, when we do a, a policy like we did last month, can right. we get a copy of that attached to our minutes? Because our minutes do say they're being incorporated with that, and we haven't. We made those changes on those sheets, but we haven't actually seen those changes. Okay. Just to make sure everything is what we said on there in the future. Yeah, also, that should have occurred. Actually, if I may, Deb, are they posted in or filed in town I'll clerk? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then, question in the revenue side. We probably, I hope we probably know. Do we know what our uh, motor vehicle supplemental is going to be yet? Did those bills go out? Mm -hmm. We have an estimate. Oh, they, did out, yeah. they did go out. They did go out. That much I knew, but I, I'm not yeah. certain okay. what the estimate They're just is. Just wondering if it's closer or above the 350000 that we estimated. I'll be there. happy to um, check with Sandy. Okay. And then one other question. Just on, on this form right here, and maybe I'm not understanding it. The very the very last column, mm -hmm. the second page, shows a 2.34% favorable, right? Right. Okay. But if we, I'm looking at all, I looked at all the, the, the sub- areas like total general government, public safety, uh, refuge, pu uh, public works and sanitation, all those are negative variances until you come to employee benefits, which is a 0 .1, 0 .01 positive, and the Board of Education, which are a 9.48 positive. Right. Now, I would assume that all that money is going to go out to the Board of Education. And I, That's correct. Okay. So if you change that, do we go from a positive variance to a negative variance? I you see, you see what I I'm do. Is there, is, there, is there any concern, I guess, is what I'm saying on the expense side of the budget? Because we're showing unfavorable variances in the major categories. And this is are we get, I guess I'm saying, are we getting a true number there? This is the problem with this kind of report, particularly on the town side. It's very different than a board of education where you have set payments made. On the town side, things are so fluid. And as I've explained repeatedly that we have many things that are paid for in full in advance. We have all kinds of issues that are very unique to a town within each department. So to answer your question, while I'm hoping that you can go down and say, okay, this doesn't look quite right, let me go to the summer, the detailed report to kind of get an idea of what's going on, I think that's the best you can use this particular report for. When I am concerned, personally concerned about something, and I, I take that as my responsibility to share with you where my concerns are, right now, and you're absolutely right, the Board of Ed, we anticipate to expend all of their appropriation. Um, things do happen. They could end up not doing that, but for the most part, they will. But when, while you add that in, there are other departments that I know, or other areas that I know will not expend at all. So it's a balance. And again, yeah. Well, the thing is, the formulas are, are. I think are. I think the formulas are what the issue is because if you look at the unexpended balance in all these major categories, they're only 30 to 35 percent expended. So that should say that you should have a favorable variance versus expenditure. So I think it's just, I think that far right column, although, although it's saying negative, John, I think what it is is just there's some kind of formula calculation in error that's, that's in well, there. Well, so. it depends how you look at it. If it's a 0% variance, then that's where you want to be. For example, selectmen on here, and yep. again, I apologize because I did not update it, but let's just take the information as presented. If yep. the target is 33%, and he, they have expended year to date 44%. Well, they've mm -hmm. overexpended by 10%. But I know that they've paid out memberships. So right. it, again, this is what I was trying to say when this report was requested. While I'm happy to attempt to provide additional information, we are a very different entity than 
school system or uh, private industry, um, and it, it is really it's see what really so skews fluid. the data is the um, is the fact that you got blanket orders in here, right? Exactly. That's that's the big d exactly. data point that's skewing it because you're basing it on a targeted, and the target is barely based on a run rate, and the run rate is 34 percent spend. But when you have when you in, when you put the impact of blanket orders in there, it really it really it skews the report, the right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Per perfect exactly. example of the debt service. A lot of that is paid right on July exactly. 1. Exactly. Right. I, yeah. And that, again, to me, looking at this report, the variance column is probably the least helpful. I think if yes, it is. I was yeah. sitting in your seat, I'd be concerned about the percentage expended versus the target. Right. And then if it's not too much of a difference, I wouldn't worry unless I saw something like 90% when it's supposed to be 30. And that's when I would go to the detail, right. try to figure out what's going on, or you know, ask me. But um, and then the ninety, the ninety, the ninety percent expended items are usually stuff that's either based on contractual one-time exactly. payment or or a blanket order. And so. I and I know that all of you are familiar enough with this to know when something really doesn't appear proper. Right. And that's when you, I know, you know, obviously you will question it. And that was pretty much what I did. I really didn't spend a lot of time on this after I saw that and pretty much went to your summary and then the detail. Right. I kind of like looking at the detail now that you've eliminated a lot of those accounts that were zeros. zeros. Yeah. It takes you a lot less time and I to go thank you yeah. for that. Yeah. Is, is it fair to put this on, you know, this is what we're going to be relying on. You know, I, I know people will look at this. When I was looking at this, I, well, I don't see it mentioned in, in Pam's report, so. Pam's report is just basically just a five-minute summation yeah. of so major key items. If you really exactly. wanted to look at the numbers, dig down into the details, you got to go into this report yes. right there. Yeah. And when there's real issues that are obvious on here, I do try to address them in my right. monthly report okay. so that you can see them. There haven't been any that I can really, I, and I don't want to just put information on here for the sake of putting information. Just right. because there's a deficit in an account, I know we've either talked about it or right. it's quite obvious why. Um, and again, it, if it isn't, then you'll question me, but the things that are really outstanding are what I try to address in the memo. One thing that you mentioned in your report, but we didn't, you didn't mention um, today, was the um, revenue from from Al, uh, Al's yes, report. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, and I was just wondering if that is, is this is going to be impacted by rate, rates have come down dramatically. And I don't know if he's seeing an impact on that and if that's going to impact um, our, our projections here going for the next few months. At this point, Al and I have actually had a number of conversations about that. Obviously, it is a concern, but most of our um, investments are in stiff and while there were con some concerns about that and actually I'll share this information with you because I um, had just gotten some of this on Friday and I don't really even think I saw it until this morning but the treasurer's office has been wonderful the state treasurer's office in communicating with us with regard to concerns for um, a number of municipalities and between L and myself, we felt pretty comfortable that the money is secure and that at this point, we're cautiously optimistic that we're not going to be hit with any significant decrease in um, the interest rates anytime in the immediate future. Of course, this is quite volatile at this point and we're hoping that um, it's not going to be affecting us in any real strong way and according to what the um, Denise Napier shared with us, they did indicate that the state of Connecticut has their money as well invested in these accounts and they are watching them on a weekly if not daily basis. And again, we are getting a lot of communication so once there is more of a concern, we'll certainly share it with you and we'll take action. It is a concern more so for me personally with regard to the 0809 budget because I certainly don't feel very comfortable that we're going to see that kind of interest rate and investment income on right. the monies that we saw last year and hopefully will maintain this year. So it will be another issue for us to deal with when we get into the 0809 budget. Yeah. <coughs> 
Okay, does anybody have any questions on the uh, the revenue side or the expenditure side of the, uh, the operating budget? Any other questions? <coughs> None? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for the update. Okay. There being none, um, uh, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I'd like to thank all the members of the Board of Finance over the course of the past year. I'd like to wish you and your families a uh, happy holidays and happy holidays to everyone for uh, a fine job for the past year. It's been great working with you guys. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to, a, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion. Second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Moffitt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned at 8.05. Thank you.